Uh, welcome, and, and glad you guys could be here today. Um, my name is Art Markman, and I am the um, founding director of the program in the Human Dimensions of Organizations. And what I want to do today is just to introduce you to the program and what we're up to, and, and then hopefully answer any questions that you might have about what we do. So I always like to start with a kind of thumbnail history of the program itself. Um, we came into being um, because of an initiative through the College of Liberal Arts here at UT. Um, Amy Ware, uh, our associate director, who's here, um, it was working for the college at that point, and she and, and uh, the assistant dean, Mark Music, were working on trying to come up with ways that, that the College of Liberal Arts could serve the community better. And um, so they looked at a lot of different options and came up with the idea of trying to do something where we would bring the, the disciplines of the liberal arts to a professional audience. Um, and from there, we, uh, uh, th there was a decision that maybe a master's program would, would be a, a way to do that. And um, at that point, uh, someone somewhere uh, floated my name uh, on all this because while all this was going on behind the scenes, um, I, um, I was minding my own business doing my work. I'm a cognitive psychologist. I study the way people think. And um, starting, I'd say, about 10 or 12 years ago, I started trying to find ways to bring my own field outward to, to other folks um, because it turns out that almost everyone that I know has a mind and many people are being asked to use it in the workplace and yet very few people know how it works. And so um, I felt like it was important to give people more insights that came from psychology to help them to, to work and to live more effectively. Um, I give that away as often as I can. Um, I blog for Psychology Today and Huffington Post and Harvard Business Review and Fast Company and places like that. But I came to the realization at some point that there are lots of people who won't listen to what you have to say unless they're paying for it. And uh, who am I to get in their way? Mm -hmm. So, um, so I've, I've done a lot of consulting over the years for, for companies. And um, when, you do a con when you serve as a consultant in the context of being a faculty member, you have to report that to the university. So, so all the, the deans knew what I was up to. And, and so when they decided to create some kind of professionally focused program, they thought, maybe because I had been working with companies that I'd be a person to get involved with that. Uh, I got an email from the deans in about February of 2011. And um, well, for those of you who've got some experience with universities, you know that we typically um, think of universities as moving at a glacial pace. And we use the word glacial largely because we don't know things that move slower than glaciers. Um, but to put into context how strongly the university felt about creating this program, um, I got this initial email in the first week of February of 2011, and by the 1st of March of 2011, I had had several meetings with all of the deans in liberal arts, and uh, we had formulated a plan to create this program, and on March 1st, um, the Human Dimensions of Organizations program came into being. Um, at that point, that program consisted of Amy, who was transferred from the dean's office over to this program, and me. And, uh, and we then spent the next six months visiting all the faculty who would be willing to sit down with us. And we ultimately enlisted approximately 65 faculty from across the university. Everybody who's affiliated with this program is a tenured faculty member at the University of Texas. Um, and, uh, and, and most of whom are from the College of Liberal Arts, but some are from other colleges. Uh, we have a few f folks from the business school, from the College of Communications, from Fine Arts, and from the School of Information. Um, we also enlisted the help of a, an external advisory board. Our external advisory board now has about 25 people from large and small companies in Texas and beyond, as well as some nonprofits. And, um, and that was to really make sure that as we created a program, that we were actually uh, providing services that people in the business community really wanted. And, um, and, and then we uh, set about getting permission from the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board to, uh, to offer a new master's program. It took us approximately uh, till the, the March of, of 2012 to get that approval, uh, which is actually fairly quick by, by state standards. Um, and then we started recruiting for our first class of master's students in the summer of 2012 and seated our first class of master's students last August. And now we're in the process of both teaching that class and uh, recruiting for 2014. So that gives you the thumbnail history. Now let me let you know what we're actually up to here. So the idea behind the HDO program 
is that we want to take the humanities, the social sciences, and the behavioral sciences and apply them to uh, business, nonprofits, government, and the military to help people in those sectors to understand people. And so for those folks who, who in the course of what they're doing, whether uh, trying to be leaders, trying to serve their communities better, trying to uh, organize the people within their, their organizations more effectively, find that the great mystery has to do with the people within the organization, then what we're trying to do is to give you the, the understanding of the way that people work as individuals, groups, and cultures, and then to give you specific tools that you can use to work with those individuals more effectively. One of the ways I like to say this is that by the end of the program, we want you to be able to think a little bit like a psychologist, to understand the influences uh, on individual behavior that affect the way that people act to be able to think like a sociologist, to understand the way groups form and how information flows in those groups, to be able to think like an anthropologist so that you can understand the cultural influences on behavior, both culture in the broad global sense that we live in a, in a world in which um, business is done across the world, but also culture in a narrower sense that every organization creates a culture that perpetuates behaviors. And if you want to make any changes within an organization, you need to understand those cultural influences. We want you to be able to think like a philosopher to understand the ethical issues that are associated with being in business. You don't generally have to look much further past the front page of the daily newspaper to find the latest ethical lapse that's gone on. We'd prefer that you figure those out before you land on the front page of the paper. We'd like you to be able to think like somebody in literature and rhetoric, to be able to communicate effectively, to be able to understand what it is you're being told by other people, and often more importantly, what you're not being told. And if we can take all of those disciplines and bring them together, then we can help to create uh, uh, individuals who have a really deep understanding of the human condition and, and the way that it applies to, to the workplace. So that's what we're after. The structure of the program itself is, um, this is a four semester program. So it starts, uh, everyone works in a cohort. So we, we bring in students as a group. They start in the fall. Um, uh, they take courses in the fall, spring, and summer, and then uh, complete a capstone project the f in the fourth semester in that following fall. And the idea behind the capstone project is to take all of this material that you've been learning and to really apply it. Most of the students in our program are currently working, uh, but those who aren't, we can connect up with other organizations and we want to, them to use those organizations to actually solve a real problem uh, for their capstone project. Um, to give you an idea of the way that the program works, um, this fall we started our program with four classes. There was a, a, the first of our core classes, and the core classes are really designed uh, in, uh, around two themes. The first is to help people to design their capstone projects. So actually by the end of the very first week of the first semester, the students had already, were already able to give at least a brief description of what their capstone project was going to be about. And the other thing we're doing is really teaching people to become multidisciplinary thinkers because if we're going to expose you to lots of different approaches to thinking, that could actually become less than the sum of its parts unless we really teach you to integrate across the classes. And so the core classes are there to help create that integration. Uh, in the fall, we also had a class in leadership that was taught by Paul Woodruff. He's a former dean of undergraduate studies here uh, and, a, and, and, and studies classics. And so he really took his approach to leadership, starting with, uh, with ancient Greece and ancient China and moving forward. And one of the things that I think is important about this program is the recognition that while we live in a world in which there's lots of specialization, in which we believe that technology and other advances have created unique situations, in fact, a lot of the people issues that we face are not new problems. They're, in fact, very old problems and that they may come up in slightly different guises, but that there's a lot of wisdom to be gathered by understanding the way that people have dealt with leadership issues and dealt with cultural issues for centuries, and that, and that we want to be able to give everyone that perspective. And so our class in leadership certainly read lots of, of current work and current discussions of leadership, but there was also a strong component of, of older work to really understand the continuity of behavior. There was a class by Elizabeth Richmond Garza on uh, organizational diversity. 
Uh, she's in, in comparative literature. And, and both she and Paul are real rock stars at the university. And I think one of the things to say about our faculty is not only is everybody a tenured member of, our, of the faculty at UT, um, but our, our faculty are, are uniformly really, really excellent people. Many of them have uh, lots of teaching awards behind them and things like that. Um, we also had a class in qualitative methods. So this, this program has three methods classes, one in each of the semesters of classwork. The first of those methods classes is this class in, in qualitative methods, trying to help you to understand how to really define a problem that you might want to solve by, by doing interviews, by analyzing documents, and by, by observing in careful ways. So that was our fall semester. Right now we're in our spring semester. Our spring semester also has four classes. There's a, uh, a class, the, a second core class. Um, that continues the development of the capstone projects, continues creating this kind of multidisciplinary thinking. There's a class in individual psychology that I'm teaching that is focused on, on issues of, of how it is that, that uh, individual behavior influences the workplace. There's a, a, a class in, um, in, in ethics that's being taught by Dan Bonavec, who's an, a philosopher. Uh, and, then, um, and then we have the second of our methods classes, which is a, a class in quantitative methods. And the idea is that in the workplace, no matter where you are, you're likely to encounter a lot of data. We want you to understand what data is all about. The summer has three classes. Um, we have a, a class in, uh, in communication taught by Clay Spinuzzi. It's also uh, uh, Zach Estes, is, uh, uh, Zach Elkins rather, is teaching in that class. And Zach is an interesting guy. He's from our government department, and he's actually a, a, a world leader in, in constitutions. He's actually collected all of the world's constitutions, and he's got a database that Google maintains of all the world's constitutions. And what's interesting about this is that constitutions are the quintessential group written document. Uh, and so he's become a real expert in how things get written as groups which is interesting because throughout the education process we do a lot of teaching of writing but we rarely teach people how to write something as a group and yet once you get out in the workplace you almost never write anything all by yourself and so we really want to focus on not only the process of communicating effectively but how to do that when the communication has to be developed in a single voice across a group. Um, we have a, a class in, in uh, the structure of organizations taught by Polly Strong. She runs the Humanities Institute here at UT. And then the last class in the summer is a, is a class in big data. And, uh, and that, again, we want people to become really good consumers of, of big data. And, uh, and that class is taught by Frank Alterhusen from our, uh, our marketing department here at UT. At the conclusion of those, of those three semesters, there's a final uh, semester to complete the capstone project. Of course you will be working on that project all along and it's built into elements of the various classes in those two core classes in particular and over the summer in the writing class. So you'll be proposing elements of that project. You are assigned two advisors from the very beginning of the program. One is one of, the, one of our two graduate advisors in the program but in addition you get an advisor who is who has more specific expertise in an area that your project is going to be focused on. And of course, if your interests change, then, then you may change advisors uh, over the course of the program. In addition, we have a number of students who are working with members of our external advisory board um, on their projects. Um, so you complete that capstone project uh, in the fourth semester. Now the way that we deliver the classes is that every semester starts with an intense week on campus. So uh, everyone comes to campus. We put everybody up in a hotel if they choose. And, uh, and we have classes every day. So you, have, you take a week off from work at the beginning of the semester, and, and we get this intense introduction. After that, the classes meet approximately every other week on Friday evenings and Saturdays. Friday evenings 4 to 7, Saturdays 8 to 6. I say approximately every other week because we are, for example, at the mercy of the football schedule. So you can't really hold anything else on campus on, on days that there are football games. And so, um, so we have to make sure that there isn't, we have to wait till the fall football schedule comes out before we can set our fall schedule. And then we, and then we set things up. Um, the, uh, those, so those first three semesters, there's an intense week and then classes approximately every other week. In the fourth semester, there's an intense period. It's at the very end of that semester. Everyone comes, presents their projects, gets some feedback 
from, uh, from the faculty, and, um, and then uh, we time that to, to, to fit with the fall commencement ceremony so that at the completion of the, uh, of the evaluation of the projects, everybody uh, walks through commencement, gets their degree, and then as I like to say, everyone gets to write their first alumni check. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the, the broad structure of our program. Um, one of the things that I always like to say is that, is that a, you know, we are the first program of, uh, of our kind in the country. We're doing something that's really quite new. Um, one of our markers of success, we believe, is that five years from now, Harvard will have one too. And so we decided to build from the very beginning um, reasons why people would come to the University of Texas for this program even after Harvard has one. Um, and so what we've done is to really connect to a lot of the things that are uniquely uh, about the Austin community and the, the University of Texas. We have some wonderful partnerships. We have a partnership with the, um, the, uh, the Austin Technology Incubator, which is uh, one of the oldest uh, technology incubators in the country. It, it, it helps early stage technology companies to grow. And uh, among other things, uh, their director is on our external advisory board. and. Um, and a number of, of our students have interacted with companies that are in incubation right now and are using those. One, one of our students is actually doing an internship with one of those companies. Um, we also have a partnership with the Harry Ransom Center, which is one of the world's great archives, because if you want to dig through materials that have real world complexity, there's nothing like getting your hands on the Watergate papers or, or uh, documents from, uh, from, from there's, there's actually a huge publishing archive with with business documents relating to the publishing world. So there's a lot of stuff with real world complexity in it. Um, in addition to that, we are deeply connected to the Austin business community. So during the intensive week, as well as uh, during uh, the lunches during, uh, on our Friday, on our Saturday sessions, we have members of our advisory board and other people from the Austin business community who come and give talks to the students during the lunch period. and. Uh, and then stick around and continue to, 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 to avail themselves, to, 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 be, um, to be connections that students can make. And so a lot of our students have followed up extensively with members of the advisory board in different ways. And that's, that's, so those are all some wonderful resources that we have. Um, we are deeply interested in the success of the students of this program. We know that, that because we are the first program of its kind in the country, that, uh, that, that our success rests squarely on the success of our students. Um, we do a lot of things to help that. Among them, we have a career coach who works with all of the, uh, with all the students. So, so as part of your tuition for the program, you get uh, three sessions. You get a number of group sessions with our career coach as well as three individual sessions. Um, this actually paid off in some interesting ways. Two of our students have already gotten promotions at, at, at their workplace. And, uh, and, and one of our students uh, was not working when he started the program and has now, has now found a job. So we're, we're deeply invested in making sure that, that our students are able to uh, progress through their careers. Um, and, and, you know, the interesting thing about our students is they come from a diverse set of backgrounds. Um, this is, this is uh, because, you know, again, we, we, while we live in an era of educational specialization, we really believe that the kinds of issues that we're exploring are uh, appropriate across the workplace. And so um, we have people from big companies, small companies, government agencies, the university, nonprofits. Um, and so the program has a, an incredible diversity of backgrounds of the students. Um, we really want students who have some real world experience already, so, so we don't take None of our students are right out of college. In fact, the average age of the students in our program is 40. Um, it ranges from people in their late 20s to people in their mid 50s. Um, and and it, you know, I think that's because it, it, it often takes a little while before people realize that, that, that uh, people are actually the central problem that, that holds back a lot of, uh, of organizations. So um, it's, a, it's a very diverse group that way. And it's also diverse in, in, in other ways. Um, the gender balance in our program is about evenly split men and women. Um, and and it's, uh, it's, we have a, a, a wide range of, of uh, race and ethnicity in the students of our pro in our program as well. So it's, a, it's an incredibly diverse group all the way around. So, so two other things that I always like to talk about um, before I kind of throw it open broadly for questions. One is um, the admissions process, because of course everybody's interested in that. Um, 
the, um, the, the, the application deadline is April 1st, um, but that means you need to get the application started by then. Um, if you think it's going to take a little bit longer to complete the application, just make sure that you contact Amy and let her know that, uh, that, that you're going to need a little bit more time. Your application is going to consist of several pieces. Um, we are required by the state of Texas for, that everyone in our program take an admissions test, either the GRE or the GMAT. If you happen to have scores from one of those tests from the last five years, those are valid. Otherwise, we need you to take it. Um, the best advice I can give you is just go and take it. We um, don't spend a lot of time prepping for it, except insofar as you have personal pride on, on the line. But um, as a psychologist, I will tell you that the GRE doesn't predict a lot uh, about people's ultimate success. Uh, and it predicts even less for people who've been out of school for a while. So um, we, we are not, we, we are required to, to have people take the test, but don't stress over it. We'll need an undergraduate transcript from you. Um, we'll need three letters of recommendation from people who know you. Don't feel like you need to reach back to find academic letters. These should be people who know you in the workplace and can say uh, effective things about you. And, uh, and the most important part of the application is the, the two essays. The function of those essays, uh, one of our faculty members put this really well, what you should do with your essay is to convince yourself that the HDO program is the right place for you. And if you do that, chances are you're going to convince our admissions committee as well. The way our admissions process works is that after your application is complete, um, our, we have a curriculum committee that meets uh, every two weeks. And uh, that committee doubles as our admissions committee. And so we evaluate all the ap applications that come in. And after we evaluate them, then there's an interview, which usually I do. And, uh, and then after that, we make a decision on, on whether to make an offer of admission. And, and after you are uh, offered admission, you have one month to make a decision about whether you want to be a part of the class. We are keeping the class size small as we grow. Um, our first class um, has uh, about 11 students in it. We, uh, we want to grow, you know, 50, 50 to 70 percent a year, depending on, on um, how, uh, what the applicant pool looks like. So we really want to be around 20 students next year. So again, it's not going to be a, a huge program. Your, your cohort will be fairly small. And we think that's important because the cohort actually serves as yet another instructor in the class. We have students who have an incredible amount of experience, and they bring that experience to bear on, on um, how the classes are taught. Um, and a lot of times they make suggestions that then become part of what we end up teaching in the program. So for example, John Traphagen, who taught the core class in the fall, did a really cool lesson about culture. So he, he, uh, he had the students go through the IKEA website and look at their HR system, because it turns out IKEA wants to infuse the company with Swedish culture. That's something that they feel is very important. And so they went through the website, and the students got very curious about how well that corporate desire was being manifested in the store itself. And so they scrapped the plan for whatever the following week was going to be, and they took a road trip up to the IKEA in Round Rock. And they interviewed uh, employees throughout the store about the role that Swedish culture plays in, in their work life. And as it turns out, it plays its role primarily in the cafeteria where they serve Swedish meatballs, <laughs> but, uh, and in a lot of umlauts. Um, but, but, it wasn't, but, it, but then that led to a very interesting discussion about whether the disconnect between what the corporate uh, heads wanted and what was happening on the ground. To what degree was that, was that really important um, for the way that the, the business runs? So um, we have a tremendous amount of flexibility in the way that we do things because, um, because the class sizes are small. So, um, so that's a, a, another thing. So that's the admissions process. Um, another thing that you may be curious about is, is the cost of the program. We are, a, um, we are what's called a pay one price program, which means that um, the fees that you pay cover everything that you do in this program, including your tuition, but also room and board during the, uh, during the intensive week, lunches on the Saturdays, all of your books. Um, our staff registers you for classes. It covers three sessions with our career coach. So there's a tremendous amount of, of, uh, that's built into um, the fee structure. Um, the total cost of the program over the four semesters is $60,000.
that's payable uh, in a variety of installments that, that are, are listed on our website. Um, and, uh, and so you're not obviously writing a single check for that. Um, after you're admitted into the program, uh, then, then Amy will, can connect you up with the financial aid office and, and, and help you if, if that's something you want. We can also work with companies and other agencies who may defray some of the, the costs of education. We have a number of our students who are working for companies or other groups that, that will pay part of the, the cost of the education and we, and we work with them. Um, for people who are eligible for VA benefits, we work with, we work with the VA. Um, so there's a lot of uh, a lot of flexibility there in terms of, of how we work with with groups to, to help the students um, to, to pay for the program. That's the broad overview of the program. I guess the one other thing I want to say is is that uh, one of the things that the two things that I'm really proud of so far in this program. The first is. Unlike a lot of, of education at the college level, there's been a tremendous amount of thought that's gone into the structure of the curriculum. So um, we, we have had a curriculum committee that's been meeting for about two and a half years now um, to develop the courses. Um, that every, every course gets vetted by the entire group. There's a tremendous amount of discussion. And what that means is that every instructor in this program knows what's being taught in every other class which allows us to do a tremendous amount of coordination among the classes. So as an example, um, first week of this semester, I did a unit on personality and the influence of personality in the workplace. I then had the students as a homework assignment go out and give um, a personality inventory to 10 people that they work with, and also to assess those same personality characteristics of, of those people so that they had both people's self ratings as well as their ratings. We then took all of that data, they analyzed that uh, and discussed that during, uh, during, cl during class, but then the following week we took all that data and gave it to the quantitative methods class and there was a whole assignment on the analysis of that data that was done in the quantitative methods class. And then the other thing that, that I'm just very excited about is, um, you know, last year when I was doing these kinds of information sessions I was selling the dream. You know, it was, I had this belief that this thing was going to work, you know. And I believed deeply in it, and I knew it was going to work in my heart of hearts. But now, I not only know it's going to work in my heart of hearts, I actually know it's going to work because it's working. <laughs> you know, we, we, have a, we have a wonderful cohort of students this year. They're, they're doing a great job. And, um, and it's, you know, it's, it's actually worked in some ways better than I could have possibly hoped. I mean, I think that the students are, are really getting a tremendous amount out of the diversity of classes that we have and the diversity of approaches. And, and uh, you know, the, we're, we're, we're doing a good job of, you know, blowing people's minds on a regular basis. And, and that's just been, been wonderful. So, um, so I think with that, I will um, throw this open for questions and, uh, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll take it from there.